The new 2023 Toyota Sequoia is here and in this video we're going to talk about some of the spec and tech and also of course compare the design to the Toyota Tundra because they share a lot of parts and I'm going to show you what I think the Tundra did well and what the Sequoia did well. So the Sequoia here is essentially a Tundra in SUV form. It shares a lot of parts and also technology with the 2022 Tundra as we're going to talk about a little later in this video when we compare the two in Photoshop. It goes on sale this summer and will be, will be available in SR5, Limited, Platinum, TRD Pro and Capstone models starting at around $50,000 for the base SR5 all the way up to the luxury capstone which they call it these days which is gonna land around seventy thousand dollars for that one unlike the tundra the sequoia comes standard with the iforce max hybrid setup which has an electronic motor placed in between the twin turbo v6 and the transmission so you have a little uh, electric motor there and together with the with these two power sources you get a total power output of 437 horsepower and 583 pound feet of torque so it is kind of a beastly machine this new sequoia it also shares the platform with the tundra of course and the land cruiser and the lexus lx however it's cut shorter here in the suv form compared to the toyota tundra and as you all know we don't get the toyota land cruiser here in the us anymore which to me has never made any sense whatsoever why they would cut the land cruiser from the us market but hey that's their decision and there's nothing we can do about that another interesting addition to this generation here is the new solid rear axle instead of independent setup that we saw in the previous generation you do have air suspension and adaptive dampers as an option and if you're planning on going off-road a lot with your new sequoia the trd pro model comes with 2.5 inch fox dampers and 33 inch falcon wild peak all-terrain tires what's really cool is that you can now equip a base sr5 with a trd off-road package and this is really cool because it adds locking rear differential bilstein dampers black 18 inch you know the black really cool looking trd wheels that i love on the tundra as well off-road drive modes and off-road cruise control and this is probably the model that I would buy. I would probably just go for the SR5, the base model. I don't need all the luxuries that comes with the capstone model, for example. And then just add whatever, uh, since I think I would want to have a little bit more of an off-road capable Sequoia than the base SR5, I can just add the TRD off-road package onto the base SR5 and I have a very capable big SUV. The inside is, as expected, very similar to the interior interior of the Tundra of course we're gonna show I'm gonna show you that compare the two interiors we're gonna see if we can find five differences between the two interiors because they're very very similar you'll have you an 8 inch touchscreen as standard in the Sequoia on the SR5 model with the full 14 inch touchscreen of course available as an option you also have a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability as standard so now let's go into Photoshop here let's have a look at these designs let's start with the most boring view of these two <laughs> uh, trucks and SUVs so we have the rear view it's boring actually it's not that that boring now when I think about it because the new Tundra looks nothing like a regular boring rear end of a truck usually when you look at trucks rear end it looks pretty much the same across it doesn't matter what brand you're talking about they have a very similar approach to the design but now actually when I think about it the Tundra has a very interesting design here and unique approach to specifically as we talked about before the bumper here which is not a third-party bumper that uh, Toyota kind of outsourced the bumper they designed this bumper themselves and they integrated it into the overall design language of the truck if you look at trucks this is the first time I've seen a full-size truck having this treatment on the rear bumper which is pretty cool looking at the Sequoia here I really like the new rear end of the Sequoia I think it looks really clean 
And I like the vertical treatment here of the taillights because I'm gonna show you why if you look at the front, when we look at the front view here and how these taillights work really well with the design of the front end as well, specifically when it comes to the graphics. So we have this line right here and then we have, you see that it dips down here inside. Let's do blue so you can see what I'm doing here. We have this line and then the LED dips down here a little bit and then inside, it sits inside of this housing which is all black and I also like the blacked out Sequoia lettering down there. It looks really clean. It, is, it, it does have some Toyota-ness over styling to it, but that's fine. I think it works better here than it does on the Tundra. And what I'm talking about is there is no connection really between the, the three boxes. I'm gonna show you this a lot better, easier when we talk about the side view in a minute here. But the graphics don't really connect with each other and I think it works a lot better here in the Sequoia than it does in the Toyota Tundra. But focusing on the rear end, I think Toyota is doing some really cool, interesting stuff, unique stuff with their uh, designs specifically in the rear end and more more particularly than that in the Tundra right here as we talked about with the bumper integration and so on. So let's have a look at the let's go to the front view because I think the side view is the most important one so I'm gonna save that for last and then after that we can just quickly have a look at the interior. So have a look at the front view right here and now you can clearly see how many parts are actually shared between the two uh, vehicles here the Tundra at the bottom obviously and the Sequoia up there top. So I like that you still have this integrated light bar from factory. You have that in the TRD Pro. Yeah, these are the TRD Pros, obviously. And I like that they they give you the light bar that so many people put as an aftermarket, me included. I put it in my RAM just to have a light bar right there in the front. But mine sits behind the grill. Here it's clearly visible, specifically when it's on like this. I think it looks really cool. You can see that the headlight is the exact same unit that you have in the Tundra just applied into the front face of the Sequoia. Talking about the grill before we go into what I think Sequoia did a lot better than the Tundra. I think this is also a little better here on the Sequoia because it's 10% smaller than the grill in the uh, Tundra down here. You can see that this is massive and the graphic, the black graphic kind of goes like a waterfall across the front end. We don't have any of the body color, the white in this case, cutting through at any point. And I think this looks a little loose to me. It doesn't look like it has a solid base down here. Comparing this now, this front end to the Sequoia, what I like about the Sequoia and what they did here is that they actually have a bar in the middle separating the lower grill from the from the main grill in the center with this piece of body color. And I think this little touch here does so much to the organization and the uh, more clean vibe of the Sequoia comparing it to the uh, Tundra down here. And another thing that I wasn't really huge fan of when it comes to the Tundra is this massive bumper here. You can see that it sticks out. It goes like this. If we have a cross section, this is what it looks like on uh, on both sides, obviously. And I think this bumper takes up too much visual real estate in comparing it to the Sequoia, which I think did a better job with integrating this bumper into the design, but still have it be a clear separation and feel a little bit more dynamic than this uh, kind of log that we have right here. It's just a cylinder going across the bottom part of the Tundra. Here it's a lot cleaner and I really prefer the front end of the Sequoia to the front end of the Tundra and I kind of wish that the Tundra had this kind of treatment to the front end as well with the more separation specifically between the uh, top grill and the bottom grill right here like that's lacking right here when you have this uh, massive black intake and <laughs> graphic in the front end. It looks like a massive hole, just mouth gaping in the front end of the Tundra compared to the Sequoia. But one thing I really like is that they kept this type of graphic, well, as you see right here on the uh, fenders, I think if we zoom in, we can see that they have the same kind of graphic here on the Sequoia as, as well. And of course, these TRD Pro wheels, which I think looks really good, both on the Tundra and the Sequoia. However, on the Tundra, I would love to have 35s at least on the uh, the Tundra because the wheels 33s they look too small for me but they kind of suit the wheelbase of the Sequoia better which I'm going to show you right now when we go into the side view so let's have a look at the side view and here you can clearly see the size difference between 
the two. I haven't really scaled them exactly to the same scale and they were diff taken with different lenses and so on. But what I went for was try to make the front wheel be above the front wheel of the Tundra and have them be similar size so you can see how much further the bed of the Tundra stretches. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about. The, the three boxes of these designs, if we box them into three different boxes, we have box number one right here, and then we have box number two being the greenhouse and then box number three being the front end and the hood and then if we look at some sort of graphic co uh, connecting all of these three boxes we don't really have that we have graphic right here in the bed as you can see and we have graphic right here in the center in the greenhouse part and then we have some graphic right here connecting almost identical to the graphic that we have right here which I think makes it look it, it kind of suits the truck because a truck really doesn't need to have a nice line flow and so on because it's such a utilitarian design that line flow comes uh, secondary I guess but you can still have it when we see it in Ford's and we see it in Rams as well but Toyota decided to go in a different uh, path here and separate these three boxes even more with having separate graphics that don't that they don't really cut into each other's boxes if that makes sense which makes it look very uh, separated this design and I think it works better for some reason I'm not really sure but I think it works better in the Sequoia but we do have this design now stretching a little further forward as you can see right here if we box this in at the same position that we boxed in the Tundra you can see now that some of the graphics are stretching looks like they're stretching further back and it kind of uh, goes a little bit into the middle box here and connect it more than we have on the Tundra and also that this part is almost like a box itself connects the whole Sequoia design better than I think it does on the Toyota Tundra even though the Tundra I think looks cool I've seen it now in uh, in a lot of different uh, variations and if you put some 35 inch tires on there it looks really really good with some more aggressive tread than we have right here then it really takes the Tundra to a another level in my opinion just having the right type of wheels and tires on the truck but as you can see these are the same size here and I think 33s look a lot better on the Sequoia it feels like the right size for the Sequoia but on if you look at it on the Tundra it feels a little too small for me now last but not least let's have a look at the interior and compare the two I'm gonna let you have a look at this and see if you can see what changes are if there were the, the kind of five differences between the Sequoia and the Tundra and I, I can show you a couple of them that I see we have on the Tundra right here we have this uh, separation between the top part of the of uh, this uh, side of the dash and we don't really have that on the Sequoia right here and of course you have the traditional stamped Toyota up here which I do prefer from this having the name the model name Tundra in the lower part right here I rather have this big Toyota stamped or embossed into that piece I think it looks really cool it looks kind of old, old school and I also like it when I have that type of graphics in the front end which I think yeah they do here on both the Sequoia and the Tundra as you can see right here it looks really cool but still there are two different treatments of that specific area right here between the two models the rest is pretty much the same we have the same kind of uh, air out air uh, vents and we have the same treatment in the middle this is I believe the 14 inch the big one screen in the center and digital dash I think this is has just has to do with equipment level it seems like it's a little bit more analog right here the gauge cluster than it is in the Sequoia and this of course depends on what trim level you choose as, as well as these uh, my, uh, speakers right here in the A pillar are lacking on the Tundra I think that as well has to do with the trim levels other than that it looks pretty identical in my opinion I can't really see a lot of differences I do love this TRD wheel here I think it looks really cool specifically with this mark red marker up here to uh, mark center of the wheels overall a pretty cool design by Toyota this new Sequoia here I'm a, I'm a fan I think it looks cool it still has this Toyota styling which I said it's a little overstyled but it's what they do it's what Toyota do I think they've stepped up their design lately like a lot of different brands has done in the last five years or so and they're starting to get their DNA back I think Toyota has been lacking in the DNA department for quite some time but as you can see right here this is a clear 
uh, DNA with the same, the, that these are, there's no doubt that these two are in the same family by just looking at the graphics and the proportions and the styling of these two vehicles. However, I'm still a little bummed that Toyota decided to ditch the Land Cruiser, the legendary Land Cruiser for the American market. Oh.